Hey guys, Cal Torak here. Today, I am bringing you my Arcane Raid DPS guide for Phase 2. Nomer is a really fun raid, and Arcane is in a wonderful position in my opinion. It's not doing near as much DPS as Fire, but I am having a blast with the rotation, and still putting up solid numbers. Shout out to all the Giga Chads in the Mage Discord for running the Sims for this phase and figuring out what the best rotation was and the rune selection. Blizzard, please give us target dummies so we can test this stuff outside of raid. Thanks. For gear, you want the prior spell damage first, followed by intellect. You really don't have mana problems at all, so spell damage is key. Our new runes have made it to where I never have to evocate as DPS. Add on the fact that the last two bosses have buttons you can press that give you a lot of mana, you really just want the prior spell damage. As you can see from my gear, a lot of my stats are just pure damage. Arcane Wrath are solid options for sure. I wouldn't wear a full Arcane Wrath set, but mixing in a few key pieces like bracers and boots are solid bets. Here are our talents. Pretty standard, nothing too crazy going on. I see a lot of people talking about improved arcane missiles, but it's not needed at all. You could take wand damage instead of magic attunement, but I never wanded on any of my fights. For runes, we use arcane blasts, spell power, living flame, missile barrage, and enlightenment. Living flame is still our best option for legs, it just does too much damage for it to be worth trading off. Missile barrage and enlightenment are huge. In Phase 1, your rotation changed based off of fight length because of mana problems. But these two runes have solved all mana issues. I never had to evocate in our raid. I was always really good on mana, even without using mana potions on most fights. For consumes, it's slightly different from Phase 1, but a lot of it's the same. For food, we use Sagefish Delight, slightly higher MP5 than our Phase 1 option. Lesser Wizard Oil for 16 bonus spell damage is a given. Depending on your gear, you might want to use Elixir of Firepower. Living Flame scales off of either Arcane or Fire Damage, whichever stat is higher. For me, since I run Arcane Wrath gear, my Arcane Damage is way higher than my Fire. So even with Firepower, it would still prio my Arcane Damage. It's useless for me outside of Fire Blast, which I was only using on the final boss to kill bombs. For Mana Pots, use Greater Mana Potion. Most fights I didn't need to use it though, and the fights I would have used it in, I was using free action potions and nature pots anyway. For world buffs, obviously get Dark Moon Fair damage buff when you can, and the Gnomer buff. Scroll of Arcane Power and Scroll of Arcane Recovery are still our best bets. They have a higher drop rate from the Phase 3 scrolls, so make sure you are identifying those ones. The Tier 3 scrolls are Topaz Rake, Shuby Doop, Peachy Attacks, Up Dog, and Thaw Words. For Nomer, you will also want Nature Protection Potions and Free Action Potions if your guild requires it. Make sure you are also conjuring both Mana Jade and Mana Agate. For rotation, this phase is a lot smoother than Phase 1. You want to start by precasting Arcane Blast if possible, then pop Arcane Power. Warning: Power Infusion and Arcane Power do not stack, so if you have a priest giving you PI, make sure you coordinate around that. I was having my priest friend PI me on pull and I was using Arcane Power after that. If you aren't doing this, you will build up the 4 stacks of Arcane Blast on pull, and then use Living Flame. Ignore Missile Barrage procs when you are about to use Living Flame. You want to get 4 stacks and use Living Flame as fast as possible. I try and use Presence of Mind with Arcane Blast during my opener to get Living Flame out as fast as possible. Use Presence of Mind when it's most convenient. After that, our rotation is building up the 4 stacks of Arcane Blast, and then using Arcane Missiles. However, if you ever get a Missile Barrage proc, you will use Arcane Missiles. Do not cancel Arcane Blast to do Arcane Missiles during a Barrage proc. Go ahead and finish your Arcane Blast cast, and then use Missiles after. It doesn't matter if you're at 2 stacks or 3 stacks for Missile Barrage. When it procs, use the spell. Always use Arcane Missiles when you're at 4 stacks even without Missile Barrage. Spamming only Arcane Blast is a DPS loss. Missile Barrage and Enlightenment are huge game changers this phase. The amount of mana we save from these two runes have really cleaned up the arcane rotation. I seriously have no mana problems at all. It also really helps the last two bosses provide mana back from clicking the buttons, but still, my mana was not a problem once. For weak auras, I recommend using my official Kaltoric weak aura pack. It tracks procs for both clear casting and missile barrage. 
You'll find a link to it below. It also tracks procs for all the other runes, so check it out. For bosses, here are my quick tips and tricks. For Grubbus, he's pretty straightforward. The adds don't have much HP. I wasn't bothered wasting mana on arcane explosion spam. Also, your tank can just kite them into the gas clouds, so not super needed. The adds that spawn from phase 1 don't count toward your parse either, so don't feel stressed to AoE them down. Don't bother DPSing the Basilisk when he's up, full tunnel vision the boss. Really easy fight. Viscous Fallout is another straightforward fight. I was able to help my raid by getting close to the slimes when they spawned and frost snoping them, then trying to AoE them down. The slime damage does count towards your parse, but if they transform into the elementals, these mobs don't count for your parse. Try and make sure the slimes go down before they can transform, and then go back to tunneling the boss. If an ad does spawn, you can interrupt it with Counterspell. Blast the boss outside of this. Crowd Pummeler is pretty straightforward, not too much to go over here. You want to make sure your range are spread out. The more spread you are, the less likely you are to have to dodge the knockback. The less moving you do, the more pumping you're able to do. If you get targeted by his charge effect at the end of the fight, wait for him to charge and then blink out the way. Electrocutioner is also a pretty straightforward fight. Your range are split into two groups, but only one person needs to be max distant for the blast. In my guild's first run, I was one of the target points for max distance, as we are teaching people to fight. However, you only need one person max distance, the rest of you can plant and be near them. Like the last boss, the less moving you do, the more DPS you can do. Hopefully your raid lets you plant and pump. Our next clear, our healers will be the only ones moving. Just blast this boss though, pretty straightforward. For the mechanical menagerie, it's a bit more chaotic. I would recommend putting Living Flame on either the chicken or the squirrel, since those two are usually stacked together, it means your Living Flame will get more damage. On the pool, go ham on the sheep out the gate. It doesn't have a threat table, so just load as much damage into it as you can. Once it puts up the lightning buff, you will slot to the dragon. Somewhere around the center of the room is good. You should be able to consistently DPS from here. If you're having mana issues, just blink to a button and click it. Focusing the sheep and the dragon are both pretty chill, just remember all four adds need to die at once. Thermoplug is pretty intense on damage. I had to swap the healing for this since my guild was struggling to two heal it our first week. Try and be positioned in the middle, that way you move as little as possible. Nothing changes in terms of rotation though. My guild split myself and our hunter into the two halves making sure we were the ones priority clicking buttons. Mages are great for disabling the bombs because of blink. Just note, you can only click the button once every 30 seconds, so you may need to call out for someone else to click on your side. The bombs are super easy to kill as well. Most of the time, Fire Blast was enough to kill them. If not, I was sending a quick Arcane Blast into them to finish them off. For Phase 1, make sure you are positioned in a way to be able to DPS the boss while clicking the buttons. This can be hard, but you gotta do your best. This may require you to run out of the boss's range to click a button, Try and have your tank make sure the boss is in range, but depending on your strat, he might not be. Phase 2 is pretty much the same. My guild uses free action potions here when we got to 5 plus stacks. Just make sure you're doing as much damage to the boss as possible in between managing the bombs. Phase 2 is the hardest phase, so you really want to burn the boss down here. The more damage you can do during this phase, the better. Phase 3 is pretty simple. Just interrupt him when he starts casting his poison spell. Myself and the rogue in our group were able to easily interrupt it every time. For the final phase, it's more of the same. This boss really just comes down to managing the bombs well and being in a good enough position to manage turning off the bombs while blasting the boss. Okay, that's my phase 2 arcane DPS guide. If you feel like I missed anything, please comment down below. It's still super early in the phase, but arcane already feels wonderful to play. If there's anything else you would like to see me cover for when I eventually make my Phase 3 Arcane DPS guide, let me know. I don't play Fire, never been a big fan of Fire Mage, so I don't see me making a Fire DPS guide. If you are watching this video when it comes out, I will be live streaming our next raid. We will be doing it this Wednesday night. If this interests you, come and stop by. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Take care and good luck in Gnomer, boys.